Okay, so we've gone through a lot of practical examples within the world of internal linking. Now, how do you begin to bring this all together and think about how to do this in practice? How do you diagnose at scale? How do you analyze several thousand internal links all at once and then understand where to get started, right? That's what we want to try and work out in this particular video. So first of all, of course, we're going to start with the SEMrush site audit tool. So I'm going to share my screen and let's kind of jump straight into the deep end. Now, of course, over the, the, the previous videos and lessons uh, that we've been working on together, you and I, we have looked at SEMrush site audit tool on a handful of occasions, but I just want to use this opportunity to dig a little bit deeper and to recap on a few things. So internal broken links, really important, right? If, if internal links are broken, equity will not pass, authority won't pass, and you won't be passing link juice anywhere because, of course, the reciprocating page doesn't exist, right? So fixing internal links are really important. It's quick wins, potentially, depending on how fragmented they are, um, and it's a great thing to go after. So we can see here from Glossier on an earlier crawl, we've got 2,000 of them to go after. So when we kind of go into each of the errors or, uh, or hints, uh, we can see here a big old list of where what page that broken link is on and where it's pointing to. And you can see here, there's a handful of products um, that uh, exist on Glossier where internal links are, and we should go away and fix those. So the home page is linking to Sunshine Yellow, Duffel Bag, the 404s. We should fix that, whether that product URL's changed, that product no longer exists, we should change that and rectify it. So this is really helpful at allowing you to identify every single broken link on the sites that you are crawling. Um, so let's just go back a second to issues. And uh, I like to just search for internal here, of course, to isolate the hints around internal links. Um, we don't have any AMP related problems because of course the Glossier site is an AMP based. Um, we don't have zero, uh, we don't have any images, sorry, that have internal broken links, which is great news. So that means none of our images that are hyperlinked are pointing to broken links, that's good news. We don't have any broken uh, JavaScript or CSS files, which actually is less important from an SEO perspective directly, but can really impact user experience and functionality on the site. So that is really one to pay attention to for your for your users. Um, okay, so we spoke earlier in the last video, or the, the video before, um, about having too many links on a page. And I think we use Burton as an example to walk through that. Now, this, if we were calling the Burton site with the uh, SEMrush site audit tool, I'm pretty sure that those particular category pages, the men's suits that we're looking at, and plenty of other categories would flag as having way too many internal links. So we need to go away and think about fixing that. Fortunately for Glossier, there aren't any, which is a good sign. Um, outgoing internal links uh, to no follow attributes. So this is going back to the point of where I said, you don't want to be sending internal links uh, to pages on the site that aren't indexable, can't be indexed and marked as no follow. That's bad news. There's nothing here as far as Glossier is concerned, which is good. And there's no internal links that are blocked in robots.txt, which is great as well. So these are kind of, the reason why I kind of go through this is these are really solid indicators to help his flag key issues and concerns with your internal links. And then of course, you've got notices which are softer warnings still um, but are still kind of important in the grand scheme of SEO. So we spoke about this in an earlier video. Bunch of links have no anchor text at all. And the vast, the reason why is because on all of these links were the um, logo in the header, uh, which of course is an image and doesn't have anchor text. And that was what was happening there. 90 orphan pages. And just to recap on that, orphan pages are pages that exist in the website that do not have any internal links pointing to them. Um, 42 pages, the click depth is too high, and so on and so on. But lots of really juicy opportunities to go away and, and pinpoint precise URLs and pages that need to be optimized from an internal perspective. But we're not done, because there's another tool that I love to use called Sitebulb, which just takes the center of site audit tool um, and digs it a, a little bit deeper with some of the issues that we've flagged today. So I'm going to switch my application over to here and take a look at Sitebulb Alerts. Now, I've taken the liberty of crawling 
one of the chocolate sites that we saw a little bit earlier um, and kind of gone through. Now, the site in question I'm going to show you to help jog your memory is this one here, Chocolate and Love. And this is the video where we spoke about um, having a different internal, having an internal link with a different canonical tag. So you're pointing to one URL with a link and the canonical tag for that, um, for that page that you're linking to is different and having that kind of separation of, of authority. Um, well, Sightball flags that with a bunch of other stuff as well. So has only one followed internal link, which is great. If it's a page that's important to you, we should certainly look at building more links. Um, broken internal links, a similar sidewalk tool did as well. Internal redirected links, which I think is powerful. We touched on this before. We can see that these guys here uh, over at Chocolate and Love uh, have 146 of them. So there's a lot of opportunities here to go away and fix them. And even though there's a lot of URLs that are here, because of the way page templates and, and website templates work, this could just be something that we fix within, you know, two or three changes. It doesn't necessarily mean you've got 146 individual changes to make, although sometimes it can, but there are sometimes golden nuggets in there for you to go after and make big changes with as well. Some kind of mini silver bullets, if you like. Um, internal links with the architects, we've discovered that already. Um, URL receives both follow and no follow internal links, which is great. There's only one of those URLs, um, but that's something that's worth digging into as well. Now, here's one that Sem uh, sorry that Sightball does that I don't believe Semrush does, which is point canonicals point into a different internal URL. We spoke about this in detail, and we can see 215 URLs here. Now, I can say for a fact on these example, this particular issue, an example, um, this is something that can be fixed on a template level. So one little code change can rectify pretty much almost all of these in one shot. And this is what I mean when I talk about website templates. It's not 250 individual links to change. That's just 215 occurrences across the website using one single template. And we just need to amend that single template. Um, so my point here is there's a slightly different perspective when it comes to hints from Sidebulb as there is to the Samra site audit tool, I love to use both. I think they're both brilliant. Um, and can both really help you to get to the bottom of your gremlins when it comes to internal links and also just find those opportunities to maximize your SEO. Um, so that is really everything. And you know what? I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. I've actually not met any of you yet because of course I'm filming this in my office. Um, but yeah, this has been an absolute blast and I've adored having you uh, with me, with Samrush and giving me the opportunity to film this 